right? Now we have the list of courses here. But in a real world application, most of the time, we get these courses from the server. So instead of hard coding them here, we need to call an HTTP endpoint to get the list of courses. Now here we have two options. One is to add the logic for calling an HTTP service here in this component. But there are a couple of problems with this approach. The first problem is that this logic is going to tightly couple this component to that HTTP endpoint. Now in the future, when we want to write unit tests for this class, we don't want to be dependent upon a live HTTP endpoint because this is going to make it harder to execute those unit tests. So we want to create a fake implementation of an HTTP service. So this is the first issue with writing this logic inside this class, inside this component. It's going to tightly couple this component to that HTTP endpoint. The second issue is that maybe somewhere else in the application, we're going to have another page where we display the list of courses. Maybe it's part of a dashboard. Maybe it's somewhere for an admin. With this implementation, we have to repeat this logic, the logic for consuming that HTTP service in multiple places. And that's not good. And finally, the third issue with this implementation is that a component should not include any logic other than the presentation logic. That is the logic behind this view. What should happen when we click a button, when we select an item from a dropdown list, and so on. Details of how courses are retrieved should be delegated somewhere else in your application. So where should we implement that logic? In Angular, we use services for that. So we're going to define a separate class, which we call a service. And there we'll add this logic for getting the list of courses from an HTTP service. Then we can reuse this class in multiple places. So let me show you how to do that. Here in the app folder, I'm going to add a new file. Now look at the naming convention, courses.service.ts. So the name of our service is courses. And by convention, we have the word service in the file name. And finally, .ts. When creating a component, we use courses.component.ts. So note the difference. Now here, once again, we want to export a plain TypeScript class. So export class courses service. So once again, by convention, we add the word service as a suffix in the class name. Now when creating components, we decorate this class with the component decorator. Remember, component. But in Angular, we don't have a decorator for services. So a service is essentially a plain TypeScript class. So delete. Now here we want to add a method for getting the list of courses. Get courses. For now, we don't want to get distracted with the complexity of consuming an HTTP service. So let's just return the same array that we had in our component and later I will show you how to consume an HTTP service. So back in our component, I'm going to select this array here, cut, back in the service, and simply return it from this method. Now imagine here in this method we have that logic for consuming an HTTP service. With this implementation, we can reuse this class, we can reuse this logic in multiple places in our application. And also, this will separate or decouple our component from this logic. So back in our component, here we are not going to have any logic for consuming an HTTP service. And this allows us to unit test this class without dependency upon that HTTP endpoint. So while unit testing this class, we can provide a fake implementation of that service. Now, if that's too complicated, don't worry about it. Unit testing is something for the future. Okay, now we have a service. We need to use this service in our component. How? That's the topic for the next lecture.